First of all, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to uh, present uh, what we are doing. And I will uh, start my uh, talk from uh, the famous quote from Albert Einstein, that no problem can be solved by the same kind of thinking that created it. And in a few moments, uh, we will understand why. Uh, uh. So first, uh, I, I don't think uh, uh, many of you know uh, something about our company, Alangus, so I will give uh, just a short introduction. So the company was started in 2002, with headquarters in Israel. We have uh, R&D here, and we have small R&D in uh, Russia. Our business area is DSP uh, software technologies for uh, uh, different applications for front-end uh, voice uh, and audio pre and uh, post-processing. Our main business model is IP licensing, and uh, we have a richer IP portfolio of uh, integrated low footprint uh, voice enhancement technology and also some music enhancement. Uh, market penetration, we have about 20 million uh, devices today, mobile phones, uh, cars, conferencing systems, and others. And our main market today, probably for this year, is automotive uh, hands-free system and automotive uh, communication systems. Uh, this. Uh, year or recently, we decided to uh, uh, invest or to uh, uh, try ourselves in a new area, in the area of hard of uh, uh, hearing people. Just, uh, and uh, the question uh, I will, uh, uh, I've made my presentation in it in, in a way of uh, questions and, and answers. So the first question is what is common between in car communication system and hearing aid? And actually, uh, microphone, speaker, and uh, DSP tasks. So if we look at, uh, in each hearing aid, and each in-car communication system, we have, uh, we have microphones. We have speakers. And we must do some DSP processing tasks uh, uh, that are, again, very, very similar. So uh, we need to do some uh, uh, beamforming with uh, two or more microphones. We need, to, we need to do some noise reduction, uh, feedback cancellation, because we have uh, feedback from the speakers to the microphones, uh, compression, uh, equalization, and uh, some uh, full band processing like uh, AGC. Uh, today, uh, most uh, communication systems use subband processing and also most advanced uh, hearing aids. Uh, so we need to do subband processing. We need to do some kind of analysis and synthesis. And uh, the uh, shared demand is that everything must be very low latency. So the allowed latency is not more than 20 milliseconds and the optimal is below 10. So what is the main difference between uh, 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 these P algorithms used in hearing aids and uh, in-car communication systems? Uh, frequency resolution. Most hearing aids use 30 non-uniform bark scale frequency channels uh, utilizing low delay, low complexity uh, IR filter banks. High quality speech enhancement requires uniform sub-pitch, about 30 hertz frequency resolution, to be able to clean uh, uh, speech uh, uh, be, uh, from noise between speech harmonics. And 30 hertz resolution corresponds roughly to a 50 size of uh, 32 uh, milliseconds or uh, 500, 512 at 16 kilohertz sampling rate. And direct overlap and add approach with symmetric windows will introduce 32 milliseconds delay, including the buffering, which is too much for hearing aid systems and in, in car communication systems. So what can we do to reduce the delay and preserve the frequency resolution? We uh, may use low delay high resolution filter banks, which is a very interesting idea based on non-symmetric uh, windows. So with non-symmetric windows, we can uh, still preserve good uh, frequency resolution and reduce the delay. Here's the example. So we have this, the green is just the standard hand uh, window, 32 milliseconds length. And we have the uh, blue uh, line, which is uh, low delay analysis uh, window. 
and the red one is a low delay synthesis window. So we see that the delay here is reduced to uh, 10 uh, milliseconds, which is quite significant. We can also reduce it more. If we look at the frequency uh, resolution of these two windows, that we see that uh, the, uh, here the frequency resolution is very, very similar. We have uh, a little bit uh, uh, slower decaying uh, uh, shape here. But it's not a problem, we'll see, because we actually, uh, to have this small uh, delay, we also need to uh, move faster to, stroll, we, to have uh, 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 shorter strolls, and that meaning we don't have any problem with aliasing. So uh, why this approach is not suitable for hearing aids? It's because of the high, com uh, high comp computational complexity. Uh, Low delay filter banks with 32 uh, with 30 hertz resolution at 16 kilohertz sampling frequency require windowed FFT of 512 each 8 milliseconds or less. Performing uh, this FFT uh, with uh, th three such FFTs each 8 milliseconds because we need two microphones and we need one for synthesis will give us about. Uh, 10 or 20 megahertz on typical uh, DSPs. And uh, high resolution uh, beamforming, uh, noise reduction, feedback suppression will add 20 or 30 more. So the lowest number that we, get, we can get is about 30 megahertz, which is too much uh, for uh, hearing aid DSPs running on uh, small uh, batteries. Uh, that generally work at less than 10 megahertz, uh, typically five. So there is no uh, possibility today to improve sound quality in hearing aids using low delay, high resolution filter banks. Uh, so if I were at Intel, uh, I would now say it's time for audio accelerators. But I'm not at Intel, so we need to, uh, to think of something else. Uh, but first of all, uh, do we really need a better signal processing for, for hearing aids? You know, there are several companies uh, occupying the markets. There are uh, many models, advanced digital hearing aids. Uh, it seems all, all fine, but let's look at the facts. So we know that uh, 14, between 40 and 70 people worldwide re report hearing loss. The number of hearing impaired people is growing twice as fast as the population. So the question is why only 15 or 20 percent of people with hearing loss use hearing aids? And why hearing aid sales are stagnating for several years? Three reasons. First of all, hearing aid is considered as a medical device. It's associated with elderly or handicapped people. 15 million people half in the US with hearing loss avoid seeking help. They don't want to use hearing aids. Another reason, high cost due to marketing and distribution. Hearing aid, hearing aid makers spend per device $250 for manufacturing the device, $75 for R&D, $250 on marketing. Uh, it is a very strange number because the device is uh, needed by many people, so it's, an, it's, it's not something that uh, you buy for pleasure. And still you need to spend such huge on, on marketing. So uh, retailing, uh, so which means audiologists will add uh, another uh, $2,000 uh, to the price, so it's just too expensive. But the third reason is the technology. Technology does not provide the required quality. The satisfaction is not guaranteed. 20 pe people uh, who bought hearing aid returned them. 7% keep them in a drawer. 70% of those who used, who used them are not satisfied. People prefer old hearing aids over digital ones for listening music. So there is a fundamental problem. What can we do? Like Apple advertising slogan said in 97, we need to think different. Instead of medical device, oops, again, pressing the wrong button. Instead of medical device, we need to think about something different of consumer electronics device with hearing capabilities. 
high cost of, of marketing and distribution. We need to think of distribution uh, via consumer electronics channels. And limited technology. So we need to utilize the best technologies from communication industries. So what are we thinking about? This device is called SALT, Smart Assistive Listening Transducer. This is something that we are developing now. It's a personal hearing enhancer with powerful DSP plus assistive listening device with wide connectivity. So this small device, and uh, I can wear it in a different way. I can wear it here. I can wear it on my hand, like a watch. Uh, this small device uh, includes very powerful DSP, 80 MHz DSP, Bluetooth connectivity, microcontroller, a powerful amplifier, large battery, vibration motor, and motion sensor. So why we consider it as a revolutionary device? Like Steve Jobs, it's a quote from Steve Jobs, that uh, uh, older people sit down and ask, what is it? And the boy asks, what can I do with it? So what can you do with salt, besides that it's uh, assistive listening, besides that it's personal uh, uh, hearing enhancer? So it's a, again, it's a Bluetooth headset, again. This device is also it's a Bluetooth stereo headset, it's two-way intercom, so if uh, two, uh, uh, pers two people can communicate with the distance of up to 30 meters between them using this device. It, uh, it is a remote microphone, so if two people are uh, in the same, uh, in, 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 a, in a crowded, in a noisy place, one which is hard of hearing, he can give this device to another person and, and, and get the, uh, uh, the, uh, the clean signal because it will be uh, from recorded from much uh, uh, smaller distance. It's a TV listening system that will deliver uh, to your ears the sound of TV. It's a wireless phone leash, so it will report because it's always connected to the phone. It will report you if your, if your phone is forgotten. It's fault detector with a large emergency button because you, you remember it has accelerometer inside. So it's a fault detector. If a person falls and, 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 and it's motionless, it will detect it automatically. And because it's connected to, uh, 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 to the phone, it will do the emergency call. You can also do emergency call by just pressing the button. And remember, the probability of fall for hearing impaired people is three times higher than uh, for, for normal people. So these things are very much related. There are other functionalities I will not elaborate now. So the conclusion. So it's time to change the concept of hearing aids to multifunctional consumer electronics device with advanced hearing functionality. So we call it personal hearing enhancer. And it's time to do more work on low delay, high resolution algorithms, sharing the same analysis synthesis scheme uh, to be used in personal hearing enhancement. This is a relative new topic and we have several things to investigate here. We need to do some optimization on, on, on Windows, LS versus, versus uh, resolution. Advanced beamforming te uh, technologies for different microphone configurations. This device, this salt is just the first in the line. There will be different devices with different configurations, all requiring signal to noise enhancement. Uh, transient noise reduction, very, very annoying for people, you know, all kind of clicks, knocks, and pop sounds because they are amplified by the device. Feedback cancellation technologies and uh, loudspeaker response correction. That's what we are, what we are doing in, at uh, Alango and also at uh, hearingsalt.com. Uh, That's, uh, thank you very much, end of my presentation.